Over the past 25 years, I have worked persistently on issues relating to women, children, and families. It is a violation of human rights when individual women are raped in their own communities. It is a violation of human rights when a leading cause of death worldwide among women ages 14 to 44 is the violence they are subjected to in their own homes by their own relatives. Right, and I don't have too much of a problem with her getting this guy off on a technicality. That's what lawyers are paid to do. What I have a problem with her doing is lying about this victim and then laughing about it. This is a 12-year-old girl who was raped brutally, was put in a coma. She was a virgin, okay? She was told she could never have children again. And what did Hillary Clinton do to this person when she said, this girl seeks out older men. She said, that's just a lie. She said, this person is mentally unstable. Also a lie. She said that this girl had made up rape claims before against people. That was a lie, okay? Hillary has a problem with unethical behavior and lying. We know this about her. Remember, she was terminated from the House Judiciary Committee investigating Watergate for unethical behavior. She lied about coming under fire in Bosnia by the snipers. And then she's spinning this tale about this video in Benghazi. She's got a real problem with telling the truth. I think this is going to be very damaging. But the media protects her. If you read um, the Washington Free Beacon's Matthew Continetti today, with Glenn Thrush, now Politico, when he was at the New York Daily News, was going to put this forward, and the editors, he said, buried it because they didn't want to hurt the cause. And let's look at Hillary's history with women. I mean, I know she's done a lot, Bob, but I mean, think about what she's done as well. I mean, we've had her leading the charge to smear Monica Lewinsky as this desperate, reckless slut. Do you remember that? Or how about when Juanita Broderick accused her husband of rape? Juanita allegedly came up and said, well, Hillary came up to me, confronted me, and tried to threaten me to keep quiet. Bob, Bob, if you're going to run on a campaign platform saying the other side's got a war against women, I'm, I'm the one. I'm your wartime conciliary on behalf of women to do what's best and fight for them, fight for women and children, then you bet you're going to get this kind of scrutiny. And it is relevant. And it's especially relevant that she brings it up 10 years later and her attitude about it. I quote, every survivor of sexual assault deserves to be heard, believed and supported, end quote. This was apparently a quote from a speech she gave that went largely unremarked, but on Twitter it made a pretty big splash. Why? Because everyone instantly wondered, what about Juanita Broderick? Was she heard? And what about Paula Jones? Was she believed? Or how about Kathleen Willey? Was she supported? No. All were dismissed, vilified, and crushed by the Clinton machine with Hillary's consent. And what about Jennifer Flowers or Monica Lewinsky? It was apparently consensual in those cases, but Hillary certainly didn't seem to support them. Hillary's running hard on women's issues. Her website trumpets, quote, I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have the right to be heard. You have the right to be believed. And we're with you, end quote. Got that? Hillary says, don't let anyone silence your voice, unless, of course... It's Hillary. This woman is by far the most famous enabler of a sexual predator in history. I don't know how the Republicans don't take this and turn it into a 99 and a half yard kickoff return. You know, this is a very serious subject uh, to me. I was a volunteer, a telephone volunteer, and then later chairman of the board of an organization called the Abuse Network that provided resources and information to women who were victims of rape and domestic violence. One of the key tenets of our training program was that women rarely, if ever, lie about sexual assault and rape. Uh, you've got to believe them at least until evidence proves otherwise. And for this alleged feminist, Hillary Clinton, to come out and essentially not only be an, uh, a protector but an enabler of her husband's behavior is to say that she and all Democrats who support her, her are in effect saying to any of Bill Clinton's accusers, you know, she wanted it. it she really wanted it. Bill, Bill didn't rape her. Bill didn't sexually assault her. She wanted it. And now she's, she's recanting on that and falling back on that. If you did that to, to a, uh, an utterly unknown college freshman and said, if anybody in the administration said about an 18-year-old girl she wanted it or did not stand up for her right to be believed when she claimed that she was sexually assaulted, that administrator would be fired from the university. Hillary Clinton should be jettisoned from the Democratic Party if for no other reason than she is an abuser 
of women. And he tries to kiss me again. And the second time he tries to kiss me, he starts biting on my lip. It's a minute. He starts to uh, bite on my top lip, and I try to pull away from him. And then he forces me down on the bed. And I just was very frightened. And I tried to get away from him, and I told him no. I didn't want this to happen. He would listen to me. Did you resist? Did you tell him to stop? Yes. I told him, please don't. He was such a different person at that moment. He was just a, a vicious, awful person. When everything was over with, he got up and straightened himself. And I was crying at the moment. And uh, he walks to the door and calmly puts on his sunglasses. And his, before he goes out the door, he says, you better get some ice on that. And he turns and went out the door. On your lip? Yeah. You're saying that Bill Clinton sexually assaulted you, that he raped you? Yes. And you have no, there's no doubt in your mind that that's what happened? No doubt whatsoever. Uh, Hillary Clinton's candidacy has always been built on the premise that she would win a disproportionate number of women's votes. Therefore, she has held herself out to be an advocate for women and girls. And of course, knowing the truth, uh, that's the exact opposite of, of what is reality. Hillary Clinton uh, has been an accessory after the fact in all of her husband's multiple sexual assaults uh, and rapes. Now, I want to be very clear that we're not talking about Bill Clinton and consensual sex, mistresses, girlfriends, conquests, one night stands, nor is this issue about marital infidelity or cheating or adultery. This is about something far darker. Bill Clinton uh, is a Bill Cosby type sexual predator, and he has preyed on multiple women when he was running for Congress when he was attorney general of Arkansas, when he was governor of Arkansas, and when he was president of the United States. And rather than stopping, stopping this, and rather than just being, just being an enabler, Hillary has been the point person in the cover-up of his sex crimes. Hillary has been the person who has terrorized, and let's use her word, bullied uh, Bill Clinton's victims into silence, either to stop them from testifying in response to a subpoena or to stop them from going public. What so, kind of tactics would they use that were okayed by Hillary? Strong arm tactics. Uh, Hillary is the person who hired the heavy handed Los Angeles and Arkansas based private detectives, including Anthony Pelicano, Pelicano, Jack Palladino, Ivan Duda. Uh, and these people use strong arm tactics. Let's take the example of Kathleen Willey, who wrote the introduction for my book. Kathleen Willey uh, was working in the White House as a uh, volunteer in the social office. Kathleen Willey was uh, very active in both of Bill Clinton's campaigns for president. She knew the president well. Uh, when her family ran into financial difficulties and she made an appointment with the president to ask for a paid job, what she got for her trouble was groped, assaulted in the Oval Office. For two years, she said nothing. But then when she received a subpoena in the Paula Jones controversy, the trouble really began. Her home was broken in and ransacked. Her car windshield was smashed. Her car tires were, uh, were slashed with, a, with a, a nail gun. Her cat was murdered and left on her doorstep. Her children were threatened by name. A strange man dressed in black, Palladino, runs up to her and says, Hey, how's your cat? Do you ever replace that cat? How are your kids? I saw him get out of school yesterday. Those are the kind of threats uh, and strong arm tactics that the, that the Clintons are using. Give me a number. How many women do you think have experienced sexual assault at the hands of Bill Clinton and then being shut down like this, like what happened to Kathy? I Miller? could identify 24, but I think there are probably hundreds because the women that I interviewed, the women that I located, are terrified. Many of them have received IRS audits during the Clinton presidency. Now. I could be wrong, but I think one of the counts of impeachment against Richard Nixon was using the IRS against his political enemies. In this case, the Clintons misused the IRS. 
nothing happened. Uh, this is uh, this is really uh, uh, the I think primary issue to take down Hillary because while her husband has assaulted these women physically, Hillary has assaulted these women psychologically. Here, only yesterday, Juanita Broderick, uh, raped by Bill Clinton and bitten savagely, bitten by Bill Clinton when he was Attorney General of Arkansas opened a Twitter account and started telling the story of what happened to her. A whole new generation of millennials, of young women, can hear the horrific details of what happened to uh, Juanita Broderick. Now, how many of them now go to YouTube to watch the actual NBC video in which she describes her abuse at Bill Clinton's hands, where she describes being bitten on the upper lip so severely that he almost severed her lip? You better uh, put some ice on that, he said, right? Right. By the way, a classic disabling move for rapists because the woman stops covering herself here and tries to cover her bleeding face. He used this on at least three of the women that I identify in my book. You've advised Donald Trump for many years. If Donald Trump called you today and said, how aggressively should I push this issue? And let's just say he is the nominee and he's up on the stage with Hillary Clinton. They're at their podiums. Should he take it to her face and say, this is what your husband did. This is what you're aware of. This is the behavior that you condoned and you enabled and just bring it right to her in national I think television. it's the only way to beat her. Uh, look, in a sense, this isn't about Bill because Bill's not running for president again. Hillary is, and therefore it's Hillary's involvement, it's Hillary's activities. Hillary is the point person in the cover-up of Bill's sexual assaults. Hillary is the one who runs the campaign to discredit and destroy those who would stand up and tell the truth of what they suffered at the hands of her husband. It's Hillary who runs the nuts and sluts campaign out of the East Wing office of the White House to denigrate Monica Lewinsky. Now, even though the Lewinsky relationship is a consensual one, it's an inappropriate one. Bill Clinton seduces a 22-year-old uh, uh, intern, uses her as his personal humidor, uh, <laughs> and, and then Hillary seeks not to to uh, to fix this, but to destroy. Uh, the messenger in this case, Lewinsky. And the guy who was orchestrating the campaign to say that Monica Lewinsky was a lunatic, that she was a stalker, that she was the one that was aggressively going after Bill Clinton and making things up, Sidney Blumenthal is now back working on the Clinton campaign. Do you believe he's the point man handling these issues for Hillary Clinton yet again? There's no question about that. He's also, ironically, the same fellow who comes up with the idea of blaming the attack on the American mission in Benghazi on a uh, an anti-Islamic video that was shown one time in Turkey, why, by, where, by the way, less than 5% of the people are on the Internet. So uh, it, we now know that Sidney, although he was on the payroll of the Clinton Foundation, uh, is the chief dirty trickster uh, and henchman for Hillary Clinton. How hard was it for you to get these women to talk to you? It, it differs. Some of them uh, are still reticent to talk. Some of them pointed us to things they had already said. Some of them would confirm on a background basis exactly what happened to them in detail, but they didn't want to go back on the record because their lives had been turned upside down. They have husbands, boyfriends who just want this to go away. They just want to forget about uh, the fact that they were assaulted by Bill Clinton and then intimidated and bullied by Hillary. So um, the, the real answer is enough women will come forward to make a compelling case. Anyone who listens to Kathleen Willey, anyone who watches that video of Juanita Broderick has to be moved. These women have been assaulted uh, and intimidated. And with all these explosive allegations that you've made in the book, you haven't been sued by Hillary, you haven't been sued by Bill, you haven't been sued by Sidney Blumenthal, and your publisher hired attorneys to put you through the ringer to make sure that everything was sourced and double sourced, correct? Yeah, I would welcome a lawsuit because that would give me the opportunity to question those suing me under oath about what's in the book. Oh, discovery it, would be fun. It would be fun. You can say anything you want about Donald Trump. He's never raped anybody. He's never assaulted any women. He has never bit anybody's upper lip. So um, I think that he is the only one with the courage uh, and the fortitude to take it right to Hillary. And he's got to take it to her not only on this, but on the entire cross-section of her campaign. There are three elements of her campaign. One, that she's an advocate of women and girls. I think we just devastated that. Two is her tenure as Secretary of State. An unmitigated disaster. The region's on fire because of her policies. She is the one who helped depose our, our allies in Egypt, in Libya. And now they're trying to do the same in Syria, uh, in, re, deposing people who are pro-U.S. and replacing them with the Muslim Brotherhood. And then, of course, there is the Clinton Foundation. 
The Clinton Foundation is a slush fund for grifters. This isn't a charity. This is a vehicle for the facilitation of multi-million dollar bribes. So the greed, the stealing, the sucking of money out of the Clinton Foundation um, is going to be a very big issue. I think Donald Trump has particular standing here that nobody else has. You see, the Clintons conned him out of a contribution. Therefore, he's a donor to the Clinton Foundation. Therefore, he can file a lawsuit claiming that he was defrauded. After all, folks, I thought I was giving to charity. That's right. I didn't know they were going to steal the money. He can file a lawsuit opening up the entire Clinton Foundation for us to see the, the scam. More fun and discovery. Yes, indeed. What's more offensive, words or actions? A woman who ensures no one finds out what's going on in our State Department, who along with her cabal are wheeling and dealing between the State Department and her so-called charitable foundation, and when caught, evidence is destroyed with hammers and bleach bit. A woman who runs the State Department like a private piggy bank, missing six billion dollars during her tenure. You tell me what's worse, name calling or lying to grieving parents as their sons' bodies lay cold in caskets at Air Force Base, at Andrews Air Force Base, and then turning around and calling those very same parents liars. Your history with women is all about destroying them. When you represented a pedophile who raped a 12-year-old girl, raped her into a coma for five days, her reproductive organs destroyed, you not only laughed when your pedophile client passed a lie detector, but you trashed an innocent sixth grader, a victim, saying with no factual basis, she sought out men like her rapist and she was mentally unstable. You don't support women, you destroy them. Whether it's all the women who accused your husband of serial marital infidelities, sexual harassment, or, yes, rape. Instead of protecting that 12-year-old, protecting a college intern, protecting a woman who claimed to be raped, your job, ruin them. Destroy any woman who gets in the way of your ambition. None of it the predator's fault. The war room created to assault the right wing, the crazy women desperate for attention, who wanted publicity, like Jennifer Flowers, who you said you'd like to crucify. You called her trailer trash. And Monica Lewinsky, you called her a narcissistic looney tune until we found your husband's semen on her dress. And Juanita Broderick, who says you threatened her. And I don't know what you said about Paula Jones, but you and your husband had to pay her $850,000 for your husband's sexual misdeeds. And you call them all bimbos. She's gaming you, folks. She takes money from countries who stone women for adultery to death. They kill them. They throw gays out of buildings. They kill them. This is a woman who's corrupted the State Department, the Department of Justice, and now I am ashamed to admit it, the honored tradition of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. What's important, folks, are not words. What's important are actions. What's important is how one candidate has chosen to lie about issues that involve the government of the greatest nation on earth. One candidate who has chosen to lie about how she conducts the business of the United States of America, our business, the people's business, the governance of our nation. And now that you know what she is capable of, What's more important to you, political correctness or the truth? When I was a 27-year-old attorney doing legal aid work uh, at uh, the law school where I taught in Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, I was appointed by uh, the local judge to represent a criminal defendant accused of rape. I asked to be relieved of that responsibility, but I was not, and I had a professional duty uh, to represent my client uh, to the best of my ability, which I did. He later pled guilty to a lesser included offense. Uh, when you're a lawyer, you often uh, don't have uh, the uh, choice as to who you will represent. And by the very nature of criminal law, there will be those who you represent that uh, you don't approve of. But uh, at least in our system, uh, you have an obligation. And once I was appointed, I fulfilled that obligation. Nobody in the media is covering this story. 
Now, uh, she got the guy off with time served, even though she said, ha, oh, I gave up my faith in polygraphs. So she's defending somebody she knows is guilty of raping a 12-year-old girl, gets him off, is laughing about it on tape, right. uh, and then is the great champion of women. And right. What right. You, well, first, it's going to go over well with normal people because it fits in with with the whole idea, both of the Democratic Party and particularly the Clintons, that they are just um, con artists pretending to care about the little guy while they're using legal trickery um, to perpetrate injustices on the weak and powerless, which is what Hillary Clinton did here. Um, I mean, this poor girl, if you read about what the crime was, it's quite shocking, more than, than comes across in that little you know, fake Southern accent conversation she gives. It was two guys who brutally raped and beat a 12-year-old girl who was a virgin. She was made infertile. Um, she was in a coma for five days. And Hillary Clinton not only defended this guy, do not believe what they are saying elsewhere that lawyers are required to do this. You know, oddly enough, um, I am a lawyer. I practice law. I don't know any lawyers who, who have defended criminals. I mean, well, personally. She said she did it as a you favor. Have to, you have to reach out to take these right. cases. No one forces you to defend, you know, Ted Bundy. It's always the same lawyers doing it. In any event, um, she submitted an affidavit claiming that this poor 12-year-old girl was a fantasist, that she had falsely accused other people before. When the girl was presented with this recently, she didn't know that, that Hillary had worked so hard to get her rapist off. She said, I don't know what she's talking about. She's lying in that, this affidavit. How can, we, how can we trust her as president if she'll lie in a court case to defend the rapist of a young girl? And I just think it fits into this whole, oh, I feel your pain, phoniness of the Clintons. Often the scandals that hurt the most, like um, Gary Hart, for example, being caught in the monkey business having an affair. When it hurts the most is when it fits into an image people, a sneaking suspicion people already have about you, and that is the suspicion people have about the Clintons, the big defenders of women and children. She's laughing about getting a, a guilty rapist off. I think this is a big issue. I think it's bigger than Benghazi. You know, Hillary Clinton make it, made a choice. She was not a public defender. She took this on as private counsel and elected to represent a man and get a reduced sentence for someone who raped a child. How does this sit well with the message she's trying to communicate that she's for women and this is something she's passionate about? Well, I think that most women that support her are, are inclined to um, do so ferociously and they are very loyal to her and they will find some sort of way to rationalize this in their minds. They might say, well, she was just being a good lawyer. Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know what they'll be able to say about it. One of the reasons this is happening is that Hillary Clinton is trying to have it both ways for almost too long. This actually was, has, has been known for some time, it, but uh, it had been repressed by other news organizations. The Washington Free Beacons, Alana Goodwin, finds the tape, she does the reporting, she puts it out there, and then what happens yesterday? The University of Arkansas bans the Washington Free Beacon from coming back because they forgot to fill out a certain form that they needed to fill out. Yeah, so I think I hope that women are going to be sm uh, smarter and intelligent and say, listen, this is inconsistent with what she's been telling us. When sh well, who should I believe? Which is the real Hillary Clinton? The one back then taking cases on, voluntarily choosing to represent a child rapist? That's a big choice. I quote, every survivor of sexual assault deserves to be heard, believed, and supported, end quote. This was apparently a quote from a speech she gave that went largely unremarked, but on Twitter, it made a pretty big splash. Why? Because everyone instantly wondered, what about Juanita Broderick? Was she heard? And what about Paula Jones? Was she believed? Or how about Kathleen Willey? Was she supported? No. All were dismissed, vilified, and crushed by the Clinton machine with Hillary's consent. And what about Jennifer Flowers or Monica Lewinsky? It was apparently consensual in those cases, but Hillary certainly didn't seem to support them. Hillary's running hard on women's issues. Her website trumpets, quote, I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have the right to be heard. You have the right to be believed. And we're with you, end quote. Got that? Hillary says, don't let anyone silence your voice. Unless, of course, it's Hillary.
This woman is by far the most famous enabler of a sexual predator in history. I don't know how the Republicans don't take this and turn it into a 99 and a half yard kickoff return. You know, this is a very serious subject uh, to me. I was a volunteer, a telephone volunteer, and then later chairman of the board of an organization called the Abuse Network that provided resources and information to women who were victims of rape and domestic violence. One of the key tenets of our training program was that women rarely, if ever, lie about sexual assault and rape. Uh, you've got to believe them at least until evidence proves otherwise. And for this alleged feminist, Hillary Clinton, to come out and essentially not only be an, uh, a protector but an enabler of her husband's behavior is to say that she and all Democrats who support her, her are in effect saying to any of Bill Clinton's accusers, you know, she wanted it. It, she really wanted it. Bill, Bill didn't rape her. Bill didn't sexually assault her. She wanted it. And now she's, she's recanting on that and falling back on that. If you did that to, to a, uh, an utterly unknown college freshman and said, that if anybody in the administration said about an 18-year-old girl, she wanted it or did not stand up for her right to be believed when she claimed that she was sexually assaulted, that administrator would be fired from the university. Hillary Clinton should be jettisoned from the Democratic Party if for no other reason than she is an abuser of women. Well, that's their secondary position, to be fair, Scott. Initially, they said they're liars, that there was no sex of any kind. They said that about Jennifer Flowers. They said that about Paula Jones. And it wasn't until much later that Bill Clinton finally admitted that there was a relationship going on with Jennifer Flowers, for which they trashed her in the press for, for a long time. And, and that's just despicable. I mean, what Republican could or would get away with that? I mean, what happens to Republicans when there are allegations like this is that they are shamed and run out of office. But somehow, this former president of the United States, is, who is such a despicable character that he almost ironically names his own dog Seamus, by the way, that's the name of his dog, is Seamus. He is an abuser of women. His wife wants to be president. She's protecting an abuser of women. And every woman in the country ought to reject this, ought to despise this for what it is. It's sexism, it's violence, it's assault, it's hatred of women. The victim, who is now 52 years old, is speaking out to the Daily Beast and saying that one of the most famous women in the world put her through hell. She also has a message now for the former Secretary of State. You lied on me. I just realized the truth of it hard back in 06 after I got out of prison. I just studied a little bit. I realized the truth now, hard of what you done to me. I said to the other man, you're supposed to be it for women. Do you call that for women? <laughs> what you done to me? And I hear you on tape laughing. Mrs. Clinton seems to admit she knew the defendant was guilty. But the victim says her life was ruined as well and now says she's ready to stand up. When I heard that tape, I was pretty upset. I went back to the room, was talking to my two cousins, and I cried a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Some of this has got me pretty down, but. I thought to myself, I'm going to stand up to her. I'm going to stand up to what I got to stand up for, you know. For a second, while I hold you down some criminal work, uh, can you tell me a little about that? What, what sort of. Uh... Oh, I didn't, I didn't do much, but I taught criminal law. Uh -huh. I did some, you know, uh, I never did a criminal trial. I did, uh, you know, jury trial. I did. Uh, you know, probable cause hearings and other cases. I had some you know, really tough crimes. I had one appear that uh, the prosecutor called me years ago and said that he had a guy who was accused of rape. And the guy wanted a woman lawyer. Mm. And wow. I do it as a favor to him. That's really awesome. Remember that case where I represented that guy? That was it was it was it was a fascinating case. It was really an interesting case. This guy was accused of raping a twelve year old who was 
the daughter of the family he was living in Springfield. He was on the side of the tracks in Springfield. And uh, the guy was from Green Forest. His family still had a little farm. And he was one of these ruthless folks who wasn't going to make a living on the land. And he was kind of around. Ended up in Springfield one of the places over there. Of course, he claimed that he did all this stuff. He took a lot of paper tests. I had to have which he passed, which forever destroyed my faith in college. <laughs> the, uh, but, you know, what was sad about it was that the prosecutors had evidence, among which was his underwear. His what? Under, his underwear, which was bloody. Sent out of the crime lab for those efforts to reform the crime lab. Crime lab took a pair of underpants, neatly cut out the part that they were going to test, and tested it, came back with the result of what kind of blood it was, and what was mixed in with it. Then sent the pants back with the hole in it, and the evidence. So I got an order to see the evidence, and the prosecutor didn't want me to see the evidence. I had to go to Moffitt Cummings and convince Moffitt that, yes, indeed, I had a right to see the evidence before it was presented. They presented these underpants with a hole in them. I said, what kind of evidence is that? You know, you've got a pair of underpants with a hole in it. Of course, the crime lab had thrown away oh, the piece that they cut out. It was really long. I mean, I plea bargained it down because they didn't have any, it turned out they didn't have any evidence. But I, took, I happened to be going to New York, and I took the underpants with me. I got the special court order. And I went to Brooklyn, where... This man whose name I now cannot remember who had um, shared in the Nobel Prize for his work on the RH factor and was one of the real premier investigators in the field of blood. He had retired from Sloan Kettering or someplace up there. He still lived in the same house where his father had been born and now he had, had a huge fence around it. I mean, he was in this bombed out section of Brooklyn. And he had taken a real interest in forensic work. And so he would analyze blood stains if he got interested in a case. And so the sort of the story from the grapevine was if he would get him interested in the case, then you know, you had the foremost expert in the world willing to testify, assuming that it came out the way you wanted it to come out. So I wrote him and got an appointment to see him and took a taxi over this section of Brooklyn I'd never heard of, never seen before got through the gates, got into his office, and he had a little, he had a basement just absolutely packed with detective magazines and things like that. <laughs> and he sat at his little desk, and I pulled out my underpants, you know, and gave them to him, and started analyzing, looking at the fibers, you know, with magnifying glass and all that stuff. And you can't, you know, you can't prove anything. You, know, you can't even, you know, so I can see a slight trace, but it wouldn't be enough to test. I went back and told Malin Gibson that I had, well, I probably can't remember the man's name, but I cut out who's who, and I've done all this stuff, and I handed it to Malin Gibson. I said, well, I'm this guy's ready to come from New York to prevent this miscarriage of justice. <laughs> so we, we were going to plea bargain, so I went before Moffitt Cummings to present the plea, and Moffitt said, what, what, what is this? And Gibson said, you know, first degree rape. And, uh, but, you know, he was dropping the charges, dropping it to, I can't remember, something like five or something. Like that. So Moffin had to, you know, I, you know, under law, he was supposed to determine whether the plea was factually supported. Moffin asked me to leave the room while he examined my client up to the, if I have a factually supported, I said, Judge, I can't leave the room. I'm a lawyer. So I know, but I don't want to talk about this. Oh, God. Really? Yeah. So that was my uh, a lot yeah. of fun stuff. Well. But anyway, that I did some of that. How, how did it turn out? What? Oh, he plea bargained. He got him off. He was time served in the county jail. He's been in the county jail about two months. 